Hello everybody and welcome to Shut Up and Sit Down's Rules Explanation for Memoir 44. An absolute belter of a war game and you should not let the phrase war game put you off. This is one of those rare games that we'll recommend to everybody and the global market agrees with us because it came out like more than 10 years ago and it's still on shop shelves, it's still selling like crazy. It's also a fantastic game to start your board game collection with because it plays great with just two people and then you can expand it and grow it in however many different ways you want with the dozens of expansions available. So I'm gonna walk you through the basics of the rules. You're gonna set up a board like this, which is gonna be one of the scenarios in the book. In the base game, you're gonna have some Nazis versus some allies. The way you win a game is by collecting a number of medals, depending on the scenario, usually four, five, or six. And you're gonna put those medals on your medal track up here. And the way you do that is by fully eliminating enemy units. And a unit is a group of men. So for example, if we look here at this nice little group of allied dudes, we're gonna kill one, it doesn't mean anything, two doesn't mean anything, three doesn't mean anything, but when we eliminate that last person, we're gonna carry him all the way over to the track, and that is one of the medals needed to win the game. That's half of the rules. The other half is how you take your turn, and that involves this track of cards. These are command cards, and they're the beating heart of Memoir 44. On your turn, you are simply going to select one. So for example, over here, I've got a pro, which means, as we can read here, order two units on the right flank. And this, this, this is Memoir right here, because a game of Memoir is divided by these red dotted lines into a center and then a flank. And different cards you have will allow you to command units in different sectors. And it's no more complicated than that, and yet, what the game gets from this rules is all the sense of tension and frustration and miscommunication that you can imagine happening in a real battle. So, I've played my card and that allows me to order two units on this flank. I could order the tanks, these soldiers, or these soldiers, because if you're on the dotted line, then you can exist in either zone. Let's say I want to move the tanks and these soldiers, then I can move units. I will then move all the units, I'll explain exactly how to do that in a bit. And move that and I can move that and once I've moved with all the units then I can attack with all the units. Once I've attacked with all the units finally I'm going to discard this card in a shared discard pile and draw a new command card off this deck and I'm gonna go oh no because it's inevitably not what I wanted but I'm gonna have to work with it anyway. And then that's my turn and then I throw it to the other player and we keep going until one of us has suffered horrible, ignoble defeat. The only thing left then is for me to explain details of how moving and shooting works. Like I said, it's a very simple game and God, this game just gets so much thematic flavor and tension and excitement from the simplest of rules. So let's go back to my example of moving. Now, this is where you're gonna to refer to your little uh, units related cheat sheet. So let's just walk us through tanks first because actually tanks are nice and simple and they're just they're just friendly they just want to play with you why don't we all play with some nice tanks so tanks as it says here can move zero to three hexes and then battle so simply put if i'm commanding a tank i could move them one two three i could move them anywhere one important rule is that i cannot actually move through other things so if we had my infantry unit here the tanks couldn't go one two because there are men in the way they'd have to go one two three and go around the men or better yet in that example with the probe card from before, I would move the men first, and then I would move some tanks, and then I'd have a great time. Um, infantry are a little different. Infantry can move zero or one hex and battle, or they can move two hexes and not battle. Nice and simple, eh? Artillery we'll get to later, because it's weird and specific. Uh, battling then is, again, simple. That's where these red hexes and the red numbers come in. So with a tank, they have a range of three, one, two, or three hexes, and they're gonna roll three dice at any of those ranges. So if these tanks are shooting at these nice soldiers here, we're one, two hexes away, which is, yep, three dice. It's always gonna be three dice. Infantry are a little more awkward. Infantry are gonna roll three dice if a unit is right next to them, two dice if it's one hex away, and then just one dice, one pew, one piddly little rifle shot if a unit is three away. So. Let me show you now how these dice work. These dice, these, mm, oh, they are so nice. God, now returning to these tanks over here, they're gonna roll three dice when we attack with them because tanks always roll three dice and we're gonna go bam, 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 and we're gonna get some results. Now, uh, I didn't get what I needed for a nice simple example. Basically, if I'm shoot, you're trying to match symbols to what you're shooting at. So if you roll 
a man, then that kills a man. If you roll a tank, then that kills a tank, which is useless to us now because we're shooting at men. If you roll a grenade, that actually kills everything. And finally, if you roll a flag, that unit's gonna try and run away, which means they have to move to either of the two hexes immediately behind them. Uh, finally, there's also a green star that doesn't do anything. So, uh, in this example here, we've got a man, and that's, that's a dead man. We've got a grenade, that's a dead man. And then we've got the flag, but if you look, the unit can't move into their friends, as we established before, and they actually can't move into this river either. We'll cover terrain uh, finally next, which means because they can't run away, that flag kills another person. If they could run away though, because these men were in this forest, they would instead just slip back towards this thing. And yep, as you might imagine, you can't go off the board, so any further flags, if you're up against it, count as casualties. Two more things worth knowing about combat. The first of which is, as units shrink in size, they still roll absolutely all of their dice. Just because a unit only has one little desperate German left in it, doesn't mean that German isn't gonna roll three dice when you try and dislodge him, so that's absolutely worth knowing. The other thing is to do with close assaults. If your unit, so let's say these uh, Germans are attacking these allies here, we roll, that gets us, oh look, we roll two damage. So that unit is completely wiped out and we get our medal. That unit, because they were attacking from one hex away, actually have the option of then moving in, which is super relevant if you're attacking somewhere that's a pain, like a forest or a village. This rule goes into overdrive if you do it with tanks. So let's say, whoa, we roll that with our tanks. Tanks eliminate that unit, they get the medal. Not only do they move in, they can then attack a second time. That only works once. First time, move in, and then attack a second time. But oh my god, it's absolutely lethal. You want to... Why is this candle even here? <laughs> you left it there. I, I thought I, you wanted that. Did I? Yeah. Okay. Uh, <laughs> Um, you're gonna roll three dice as tanks, that's gonna be dangerous, you're gonna eliminate a unit, then you can roll three dice again, look here, pow! It's absolutely, oh, well that's rubbish, but it's still, it's absolutely insane. Finally, we're gonna round off your incredibly brief military academy training, it's fine, you're probably better equipped than English generals in World War One. Uh, that was a nerd joke. Uh, let's round it off with terrain, uh, because terrain is massively important in memoir and just as simple as everything else. So. I will say now that as you buy different memoir expansions and explore different scenarios, different terrain will all come with its own card and you're going to be fighting over all kinds of different hills and valleys and, and minefields and frozen lakes and hedgerows and God knows what else. I'm just going to cover the three most basic ones to give you an idea of how this works. First off, forests block line of sight. What does that mean? Well, it means that you can't shoot through them. So the way you trace line of sight and check if a unit can see another unit is you trace the center of their hexagon to the center of the other hexagon. If it travels through a hex that blocks lines of sight, you can't shoot, which also makes sense. All terrain makes sense. This is all going to be very easy for you to remember because obviously you can't shoot through a million trees. Um, however, let's change our example and say these sweet little Nazis were here. They actually could hit that unit because you're still tracing line of sight. It doesn't go through the hex, does it? It only kind of skims on the side of the forest, so that would be legal. Now, I'm gonna set up a more complicated example because this is one of Memoir's fussier rules. How would I do that? Oh God, can I? Let's definitely, uh, let's definitely, let's definitely have an edit here. This is a weird hypothetical example because for a start, the tanks aren't even in range. But uh, if we are trying to trace line of sight from these tanks all the way to these dudas over here, uh, they would not have line of sight because in drawing the line, first off they touch this hex and then they touch this other hex, which if we sort of squeeze them together like that means they can't actually see through. But like I said, that is almost certainly not gonna happen in your game. Let's let's just move on. Next up for forests, the unit moving in must stop. So if we're moving with our tanks through into this forest, that ends their movement. Um, and then we've also got another dickheaded bullet point, unit moving in cannot battle, meaning when you enter a forest, uh, you have to stop and you can't shoot. So that's awful, right? Why would anyone do that? Well, because it's cover. Finally, on this card, we have this minus one next to a picture of a man, meaning that when men are shooting at our tanks here, they're gonna roll one less dice. And when tanks are shooting at the unit in the forest, they're gonna roll two less dice. That is 
absolutely huge. Another bit of terrain you're gonna be finding quite early and also another cool miniature that you'll find in the base set of memoir are, uh, what are these, sandbags! My God, I actually blanked on the real world name of them and barbed wire. Sandbags are interesting because they're going to cause that unit to ignore the first flag that's rolled against them, meaning they will not retreat. They will still retreat on the double flags. Also, when they move, the sandbag token is removed from the board, so that's very cool. Finally, barbed wire. Barbed wire can be run over and immediately removed by tanks, but if infantry moves into barbed wire, just as if they were moving into a forest, they must stop. And also they can, instead of battling, remove that barbed wire permanently, but yeah. A very thematic, very annoying little rule. Skipping on, we've got towns, which are exactly the same, but they're extra mean to tanks. And we've got hills. You know what? I, I don't even need to teach you this because as soon as you sit down to play Memoir, you're gonna have some cards laid out that detail all the relevant terrain types in that scenario. You can give them a quick read and learn them like that. Finally, we're gonna round off your memoir training with what have got to be the coolest units in memoir, which is artillery. They don't always show up, but when they do, ooh, ooh, it's really exciting. I think it might just be me who likes artillery. Let's move on. So artillery is only a little two miniature unit, meaning they only really have, they can only take two hits before they're completely eliminated. But for that, you get the most ridiculous range in memoir. If you're if they're shooting at something, they get three dice, three dice, two dice, two dice, one dice, one dice, meaning they can just pelt something at the other end of the board. The cost for this is that when you activate them, they can either move or battle. So if you were planning on moving them, like for example, running away, they're not gonna be shooting back. That's a bit of a pain. And that's it. Unbelievably, for this game that is unquestionably World War II in a box with all the fainting and excitement and retreating and attacking and different fronts and different weapons and different strategies, that's all you need to know to get stuck in and start playing. And if you're still not sold on Memoir as a phenomenal, clever, exciting experience, just Google Shut Up and Sit Down Operation Overlords to find our video where we play the ridiculous eight player version of this and see just how many stories and how much wit and ingenuity and game design went into that because the Dice Tower describes Operation Overlord as an 11 out of 10 and I couldn't agree with them more. Thank you so much for watching everybody.